So is it more for if you don't see it or when you do see it? It's a great question. So it's a little bit of both. Um, for all of the disease detection tests that we sell, uh, first of all, the rapid test that's launching in the fall is essentially going to be if you see it. Right. Okay. So you see white spots, you see white mucus, something on your fish. Okay. You want to figure out what it is. Right? Yep. So we give the opportunity for you to either swab your fish or essentially take it from the water column and okay. then figure out if it's ick or velvet from that. So okay. you can delineate and figure out the treatment from there. Okay. So for, that's coming. Yes, that is coming. What we have on the market today that is launching at Reef and Palooza here is our QPCR mail-in test. And that is essentially, you just collect your water sample and then you mail it to us and your job is done. So from there, once it's in the mail, delivered to us within 72 hours, we can get you results that will not only tell you if you have either ick, velvet, uranema, or lymphocystis, but also how much is in your system. So things like uranema, ick, there's been data to suggest that it exists in tanks, mm -hmm. right? At low levels, doesn't cause much of a problem. And we might see that in some of the results. We okay. might see clean tanks, right? But being able to redo these tests to over time, over months, over things, we can check these levels over time, seeing how it waxes and wanes in DNA concentration, okay. to then figure out if this disease is you know, showing up, if it's gonna outbreak, and these kinds of trends in okay. overall analysis. So you recommend doing a couple of these tests, or even monthly, to build that baseline of data? Absolutely. Not just a one-off? Yeah, and ab right up front, I would suggest, even if you have nothing going on in your tank, send a test in. Because it's just like in uh, human physical, right? Every six months we go in. If you're healthy, your doctor still wants to see you. They need to know what your baseline is. They okay. need to know what healthy looks like to you. So every tank's gonna be different. And really, I would do this once a month, it sounds like, to build that baseline. Right, absolutely. And then if something goes wrong, send in another one to try to capture that data for when it's maybe higher. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yep. So has there been data that is out there that says this much of the ache in the tank is now the point where the fish are really going to get it and show it? But anything below this, it's just kind of there. Yeah. So th there is some data out there when it comes to like the actual numerical copies of DNA. It gets a little tricky. Okay. But there is suggestions of in terms of what it looks like within our sampling method. So that's, you know, when I'm in the lab and I'm tinkering around with stuff, that's what I'm figuring out. Is okay. essentially what those thresholds look like, what might be problematic, what could be problematic in the future, okay. and then looking at that and taking the trends in that. So you guys are gathering data right now to try to develop those baselines to figure out where do these things maybe kick off and right. then become a problem. Exactly. And okay. within our test right now, we have limits of detection of, you know, within samples, about 10 to 100 copies of DNA. It's very, very low, and okay. they're proven methods. Okay. However, when it comes to the relevance of that data, that's where these experimental tests come in. Okay. So essentially what we're building here is a repository of that data to be able to suggest what is best. Word. Yep. Ick, velvet, uranema, lymphocystis, yep. four diseases. Yes. And he plans to expand now more than that. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of uh, targets that are in mind. First of all, algae, uh, cyanobacteria, same thing. Okay. So uh, mistaking bryopsis, for example, can become very tricky okay. when it comes to treating algae versus hair algae, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Things like that, uh, dinoflagellates, different species require different treatments and trying to make sure that you're actually tailoring your treatment accordingly. Sure. So, you know, just the same way that we view disease, we can view these pests and whatnot. Okay. And with the rise of uh, antibiotic bacteria, or antibiotic resistant bacteria, excuse me, in yeah. humans, we're probably going to start seeing this in fish too. And I don't want to sound the alarms or right. anything. But within that, this technology also allows us to look at uh, genetic targets that mark different antibiotic resistance genes. So in other words, we can tell you if the bacteria that's infecting your tank is resistant to a certain antibiotic or not. Okay. So the recommendation may no longer be just throw Cipro in and see what happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. It might be more along the lines of, okay, here's five antibiotics. This one is going to be your best bet. Okay, so we can get more focus as opposed to a broad spectrum antibiotic. Exactly, exactly. Okay, great. Walk me through doing one of these tests. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll grab here. Ooh. You start out with a very large syringe. And essentially, you take the syringe, you draw up your water, okay. your tank water, and then you send it through a syringe filter. So that's all provided in the kit as well. So 
water goes from the syringe through the filter. Yep. And then from there is a little bit of a preservative that's included in the kit as well that goes okay. into the, the filter. Yep. Goes right back into the mailer and sent to us. So how many, just one vial that gets it done? Yep, just one. And so we recommend about a 50 milliliter sample uh, okay. for starting out for DNA concentrations. And okay. then from there, essentially that's enough for us to do our due diligence. So sample comes into us, we extract the DNA, we purify it, we do everything that we need to do to make sure that the test is relevant to the test. So you turn it 72 hours once you get it at the lab. Correct. And then it's the mail getting it to you, who knows? Yep, yeah, and that, that's the hard part, right? right, right. And because we're, we're based in Baltimore, Maryland, you know, a lot of things, if you're on the West Coast and you're sending in samples, it's right. gonna take an extra day or two. Okay. Uh, luckily, we've proven out that the stability of the, uh, the filter itself is able to handle all of that. Okay. So when, when it comes to stability of the product, we're good. Okay. Um, however, you know, it might just take an extra day or two to get those okay. results. So right now, 72 hours for you guys to run the sample, get its data, but you said there's a rapid test coming. Yes, so in the fall, uh, we're aiming to bring this disease detection to home. So essentially, you can, within one hour, tell the difference between some kind of disease or symptom that's in your tank that you're trying to figure out what is causing it, right? Okay. Because all of these treatments are gonna be tailored differently. Okay. So it's based on the same DNA replication technology, but it's much more able to be done without instrumentation. So huh. super neat when it comes to applications of things that are going on in health sciences for humans okay. and bringing that into this industry. Okay. So all of these rapid tests uh, are gonna be rolling out. The first one is going to be uh, Ikin Velvet. So kind of along the same lines as our, our qPCR test. Yeah. And then beyond that, we're looking into your anema, brooklynella, uh, a few other really high hitting targets that it's, it's about speed. Because okay. as soon as you see it, you should be able to diagnose it right. and then treat it accordingly. Because otherwise, the fish line might not make it. Right, so then is the rapid test just the detection of the disease or are you still gonna have you have to get to some baseline to then have it actually be a problem. Yeah, so that's actually what we're uh, we're testing out right now. We've done a few rounds of beta testing for this uh, rapid test. Okay. And what we've seen is that uh, the test is actually a little too sensitive. And that is, you know, for me as a scientist, you know, pat on the back. Yeah. But when it comes to using the rapid test at home, it might just pick up background levels of it. Okay. Which, you know, is okay, but at the same time, if you're looking for an outbreak, mm -hmm. you need to be able to delineate between the two. Right? Okay. So trying to make sure that it's accessible and readable by people is what we're aiming for. I'm just sampling water. I don't have to scrape gills, scrape skin, any of that stuff. Yeah, no scrapes. So we do include a swab in the kit if you'd like to go to the individual fish, like if there's, for example, post-mortem testing, things like that. Okay. Um, otherwise, if you're getting a fish and it looks kind of sick from your local store or something and you want to test it that way you can absolutely test that individual fish okay uh, otherwise we do offer everything within the kit that allows for from the water column as well so if a fish dies I don't know what it is could I swab a dead fish and get some accurate data on it? yeah absolutely yeah. I would I mean I would personally recommend within like 24 hours I, was say, I mean the fish is gonna start to smell a little bit well if I freeze it <laughs> I have a fish that died a year ago it's in the freezer in a bag can I pull it out and swab it is it any good at that point or is it is everything dead on the fish? I can't guarantee it. I would say a high likelihood of maybe. <laughs> you heard it here Are you first. a politician <laughs> or are you a scientist? Okay, I also think I quarantine every fish that comes into my tank or my client's tanks. I'm also thinking this is a way that I can bring the fish in, sample their water and get an idea of what I'm going after to actually treat if they have something they might not be able to see. Yeah, absolutely. And, and honestly, if, if I were using this, I would use it as a sanity check more than anything. Because if you have a quarantine fish and you say, okay, this fish is done quarantine, it's a double check. Right. So even if it comes back negative, that's great. That's but if it's do. positive but not positive enough, that's also what you guys are trying to do. Yes, yep, absolutely. Is it more accurate if I can somehow catch the fish and swab the fish? For the rapid test, yes. Okay. Uh, because it's gonna give a much more concentrated sample and give you an actually, like what is actually on the fish rather than floating around in the water column. Okay, because diseases like ick, there's only a, one stage of their life where they're swimming around in the tank. Right. If we don't happen to catch it, they could think that we don't have it at all. Yeah, so our, our test actually focuses mainly on cell-free DNA, so essentially it's DNA that's in the water okay. that may have just essentially come out of the organism if it died or during the replicate cycle. Okay. Uh, anything like that, there's going to be DNA floating around in the water. 
So not so that's necessarily what we're talking the about. organism itself. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we're putting a little bit of a chance here if we can actually catch that in the water column. Right. right. Is it any more accurate if I say swab the filters or sample in a filter as opposed to the water column? Yeah, it could be. Um, one of the things that we've seen actually in beta testing is that uh, UV sterilizers can actually have a huge effect on DNA stability, which is known when it comes to, you know, biologics. Right. But beyond that, um, you know, trying to make sure you're not sampling from the outflow of UV, things like that. Sure. Because then otherwise you might get a, a sample that's not indicative of your type. Okay. So, got it. So ideally it'd be water that's coming right out of your overflow before it hits any filtration. Right. That would be best. Yeah, that would be great. Or just straight up, you know, from the water the water itself. Water yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And maybe if we're lucky we can catch a fish and right. but they'll go chase your fish around the tank trying to get it. Yeah, out here with the six line wrasse in the in the rock work. He said the dirty word of six line <laughs> wrasse. This man knows me well. I'm trying to raise my blood pressure. Here. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna take one of these home. I want to establish some data in my tank. I love the idea that you guys just aren't wanting a one-off. You want to have people build their data so you have that baseline. Yep. It's a great start. I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'll report back to you.